So what we have to do here is just take this off. I love this about the boiler. It's got this little area here. It's perfect for putting that there. There we go. That's off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this here. There's no way I'm gonna be able to reach this part of the flue from outside. Um, so instead of doing all of that, I'm just gonna measure from this wall till here. It's about seven. So it's about seven centimeters, which you can't really see from the camera, but yeah, about seven centimeters. So it ends there just shy of it. So that means this needs to go in from here, seven centimeters. Okay. So essentially what we need to do is remove this. And all we need is for this to be seven centimeters from here to here needs to be seven centimeters. Now I'm going to measure from outside. From outside, oops, is 28 centimeters. So just there, 28 centimeters. Okay, can you see that? 28 centimeters, and we said seven, right? So we measure from there, and we go 28. So as we measured before, from there to there, 28. But then we've got the bit that where it goes into the actual flu torrent or the flu elbow. So from there is an extra seven centimeters. So an extra seven centimeters takes us to 35 to 35 centimeters. So we need this to be 35 centimeters. So that's where we cut in. Okay. So 28 plus the seven that we added on. That is 35. It's not the straightest, but it's just for visual purposes. So you guys can see. It protrudes ever so slightly by... One and a half centimeters. Okay. So one and a half centimeters, we can then just pull this out, twist it, pull it out, it comes out. So when we cut the new one, it just needs to be one and a half centimeters longer than this. Now remember, we only want 1.5. Done a bit of a taper here at the end. I don't know if you can tell. Um, but over on this end, this is the factory side and it has a hole. The hole goes on the top. So here, so that's where the hole goes. It goes in like that. Twist that in. And twist it just to catch and it still sticks out 35 to the line obviously this bit is where the uh, weather seal sits so just there tie a bit of a knot on it so it weighs it down a little bit I nearly forgot the weather seal. So just as I got up there, I was like, oh, weather seal. So I'm putting it down now. Okay. So 
So that's it there. All we're going to do, bring it in just like that, and it's in. That's pretty much it. Now, all I need to do is just chop this off. We can see this is the top. We can see there that this is the top, and we can actually see through. You guys can't really, but I can see that that's straight. Okay, so I can see that straight, and I'm happy with that. I'm gonna do now. So we're gonna lube up in here all the rubber bits. So first things first, I'm gonna put this in here, just like that. Plunk this on. We've got this part and we've got this part. We want this to be halfway meeting the two. Okay, and then we've got two screws here that need to go in. Uh, and then all that all that's doing is joining this and this. There we go. That's it on there. We're going to quickly go through technical bulletin 152, which just explains that obviously you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Um, over here we can see this flue is held in by a screw and it is also screwed to the boiler so that nobody can pull it out. So this is an example of secured and sealed and obviously it's sealed here with the weather seal as well. Now over here we have another example of a flue that doesn't have securing uh, screws. And of course, that means that this can be pulled out, which is shown here. So someone from the outside, whether it's a child or an adult, whoever it is, just decides to pull it out. It could be wind. Um, of course, this is not sealed here either onto the f onto the actual boiler. And you can see that here it's, uh, it's come out a little bit. So that means that there'd be carbon monoxide going into the properties. In, in this case, you'd have to seal the inside and the outside to stop someone from pulling it out and of course stop it from moving to the side like this in the boiler. It says, if during installation, gas safety registered engineers are able to, are unable to confirm the suitability of a sealant, i.e. an expanding foam product or silicon from both boiler and sealant manufacturers, then the sealant product should not be used. Due to shrinkage and potential UV degradation, um, so basically what this is saying is just be careful of sunlight. Um, you don't want your expanding foam to be exposed to sunlight is what it's saying. But obviously it's explaining here you can use uh, foam products. Worcester goes into a bit more detail about this. So it just says here for the purposes of this document sealed to shall mean with a suitable building material or purpose-made products, suitable material should adhere to the flue and the building fabric and must set firm. Sand and cement is preferred, but expanding foam, silicon sealant and other similar products are suitable. So all Worcester does here is they just uh, making it easier to read because some of the legal documents are quite difficult to read. So Worcester explains it here and they use their telescopic flues and they, they explain that where the flue actually expands or where you pull it through to to make it larger you don't actually seal that part because it needs to be inspected so it's shown here that in this case you'd put the sealant inside here and inside here and also here and there now if you're using sand and cement how would you get any sealant in there the only way would be to get a expanding foam hose and spray it in there the flue joint is buried further than 40 mil. I mean, this that's going to be common. That's going to be nine times out of 10, right? So in that case, you wouldn't seal the inner wall at all. You would only seal, seal the outer wall. And of course, there's no UV because it's protected by the weather seal. And they've said the foam is okay. So you'd get your expanding foam all the way in there and that's all you need to seal in this case. 
So that's what gas safe wants. However, what the government or what uh, the building regs want is, for instance, here it explains cavities in the construction of a building provide a ready route for the spread of smoke and flame, which can present a greater danger as any spread is concealed. For the purpose of this document, a cavity is considered to be any concealed space. So because we're going through the wall and there's a cavity, of course, the flu could rust and it could start leaking into the um, cavity. Of course, the flu could, um, you know, it could carry gas because on occasion a gas valve can fail. So of course, we want to prevent anything from getting into the cavity. So foam again is a great way to do that. Um, so that's why we'd want to use something like that. Uh, and of course, if there was any sort of fire, the fire wouldn't spread through into the the property. In this case, I installed the, the flue in the loft. So if there was a fire downstairs, the fire could spread up and come out into the loft and spread to the loft. So by putting fire resistant foam, I, I would really recommend using fire resistant foam as opposed to just standard foam because you don't know if that foam is um, actually more flammable. So use fire resistant foam.